most developers use mocking frameworks, but do you know what? You don't need a complex mocking framework to have cleaner and maintainable tests. This is a typical test written with a mocking library. On this case, I'm using MockU, since it's the one that is most used in the .NET community. Mocking libraries got so popular, the term even became a verb, mocking. But I honestly believe that knowing the fundamentals and the formal terms can help you to build better tests. Gerard Mezaros called them the test doubles. There are multiple types of test doubles, and you can match them to the typical things that you do with your mocking library. The name test doubles comes from the notion of stunt doubles from the movies. There are multiple types of test doubles. We have dummies, stubs, spies, mocks. As you can see, mock is one of those types. And it's from this type of mock that comes the mocking library. Besides those four, there's also fakes. While a mock is kind of like a spy and a spy is kind of like a stub and a stub is kind of like a dummy, a fake is nothing close to those. So that's why I group them into different columns. And why mocking and mock and mocking libraries became so popular? Because they are highly connected to a different type of testing. So basically, there are two approaches to test those dependencies. We are talking about state verification and on the other hand, behavior verification. So state verification is everything that we'll be doing with things like spies, dummies, fakes, but mocks lead you to a behavior purification approach. Before we move in to take a look into each type of those test doubles, let me explain you why you should consider test doubles instead of a mocking tool. You will see that by applying test doubles, you will gain simplicity and maintainability. On the other hand, there's one reason why I still use mocking libraries, because we are not isolated from the world. And when we work in the team, in a common project, we'll have already adopted things like mock you or and substitute. And when there's a common approach of doing things, introducing those different concepts may be a problem. But I hope that by the end, you may want to share this video with your team and you will drop your mocking framework, likely. Let's implement some test doubles. But before we start, let's take a look into the code that I have here for our example. By the way, you can grab this source code as a patron, as always. On the folder under test, you can find an I user repository. This represents the dependency that will be mocking, just to use the slang. This interface has a save method that receives an user and returns true or false, depending if it was successful or if something happened. On our user service class, we have basically the implementation that we'll be testing, the system under test. And the implementation is quite simple, as you can see. We receive the I user repository, and then we'll be using the add new user. The add new user is the method that we'll be testing. If the argument is no, we'll throw an exception. Otherwise, we'll call the user repository. If it returns true, result okay. If not, not okay. Quite simple example, just to demo how you can do those things. So let's write some tests. Let's start with the dummy. Let's create a test to check that argument null exception. So the first thing is the setup of the test. As you can see, I need to provide an I user repository into this user service. So I need to provide my dummy on this case. And that is what I'll be doing new dummy user repository. Now let's act. I will be using here fluent assertions. And since I'm expecting an exception here, what I will do is to create a func that calls the add new user providing a null. And then I can assert that that func will throw an argument null exception. Just that. So now we need to implement our dummy. So let's see how we can do that. And we will see that it's quite simple. I will be using the refactorings of my IDE. On the case is JetBrains Rider. You can find the same things on Visual Studio. First thing, create type. Now, since I need to implement interface, I will implement missing members. And voila, I have my implementation of my dummy. I will not change anything. Why? Because when you are using a dummy, you don't want it to be used by mistake. So if you throw an exception and anyone is using it by mistake, for example, you copy and paste a given test, you will notice. So you just use those two refactorings and you have your dummies in place. Dummies are perfect for this type of cases where in the constructor, you always need to provide something. But for that test that you are writing, in fact, you don't need it to do anything because it will not be called. On this type of tests, when you are just validating, for example, court clauses, they are more than perfect. So let's move to the next one. As you remember, I told you that stubs are kind of like a dummy. So let's go to the stubs first. 
On this case, let's write a test to check that the result is okay when the repository returns true. So let's do the arrange. Once again, we need to provide something to the I user repository. So what I will be doing is to provide a new stub user repository. Now let's do the act. I'm basically calling the add new user. And this time I'm providing a new user in fact. And let's assert that the result is in fact okay. So let's implement our stub. Once again, let's do the same process. Create type, implement missing members. But now, as you remember, I want this to go through. So I want to simulate the use case when this repository will return through. So I will do something really simple. I will just go here and say return through. So now my test will succeed because when I call this, I use a repository, it always returns through. So it's perfect. However, this is not perfect because you will want to test the case where this returns false, right? So what you can do is to create multiple stubs and give proper naming. For example, I can name it stub success user repository, apply the rename refactoring. And now I know that if I want a repository that will return success, I will just need to use this one. And I can have one that is stub failing user repository. And you can see how simple and readable the tests are. So let's move forward. What's the next step? It will be spice. Do you know when you use your mocking library and you check things like if a method was invoked X number of times, or when you want to check that the arguments were exactly the ones that you were providing. So let's take a look. This time, let's check that when the repository is invoked, we are providing the correct argument. It's exactly the user that we provide, but also that it was only invoked once. So once again, let's start with the range. The user service needs something there, the I user repository. So we want to provide our spy. We create a new spy and we provide it. Now let's create a, a variable with the user. We call the method, add new user, and we provide that user that we sent. And on the assert, what I will be doing this time is that I will check the state of the spy to observe if the last added user is equivalent to the one that I provide to the method and also that that repository was only invoked for once. Now we can create our spy. Once again, use the refactorings, create type, implement the missing members, and let's add two properties that are the ones that we are asserting. Last user headed and number of calls. So every time that we call the save method, we need to update those variables. Number of calls is easy, number of calls plus plus, and the last headed user is basically the user that we are receiving as an argument. Let's return and our test is complete. So we create our spy and now we are observing the state of that spy to ensure that our system under test is behaving as we expect. For sure you recognize this from the mocks. And talking about mocks, let's implement a mock by hand. And let's do something similar to the one that we have done on the spy. Let's check that we are providing exactly the user that we are expecting. So a range, we need to provide the mock. So once again, let's create a mock user repository equal to mock user repository. We send it as an argument, but now we will start seeing the differences between a mock and a spy. Remember what I told you in the beginning, spies, dummies, fakes, stubs, they all do state verification. So you interact with them and then you can check the state of those. Mocks do behavior verification. What does that mean? It means that you will define expectations on the mock and then we'll ask the mock to verify those expectations. So the mock itself has the behavior of ensuring that something happens. So it will be the mock throwing the exceptions or failing the test, let's say, if the expectations are not met. So the first thing that we need to do now to define the expectations, and you are familiar with that when you are using a mocking library. As an example, I can define something like having an expectation that expect that the save is invoked with a given user ID. I would say, for example, one, but to make this better, let's declare a variable with the user and we can forward the user ID to the expectation. Now let's act on the behavior. It's more of the same. And now finally, what you'll be doing is slightly different from the things that we have done so far. So far, we have been using the should operations from fluent assertions, for example, and is the test that is asserting the state. Now what we'll be doing is basically delegating into the mock the responsibility of checking that everything is fine. So in our assert, what we do is to call the verify method of the mock. 
So let's generate the mock to see what is behind those expect and verify methods. Once again, create the type, implement the missing members, and the same way that we were doing that on the spy, we need to keep track of what is happening. But since mocks work with behavior verification, those things can be private. And what methods do we need to have here? We need the expectation one. So we'll say that we are expecting a given user ID. Let's set that user ID to a private variable. Okay, we have our private hint here. And based on that, we can review the implementation of the save. So on the save, what you'll be doing is to set into a variable, basically, if it was true or false, if this was invoked with the correct user. The last thing that is missing is the verify method. And on the verify, we'll check if the save method was invoked with the expected user. So if we define the expectation of the user ID, if the expected user ID has a value, and this was not invoked, it means that we should fail. So here you could do the assert thought fail, right? And I'm basically throwing in the fail exception and it will fail the test. So you can see it's a simple implementation. So now it should be clear to you the difference between a mock and the other types of test levels that I showed you. But there's a missing one here that is the fake. Let's do the fake one. If you have seen one of my exact architecture videos, I bet that this will not seem strange to you. So a fake is basically an implementation, a simple implementation that you are doing of that interface. So you are in fact implementing that thing. But instead of implementing the real one, the slow one, let's say, that will be touching a database, an API or something like that, you can do an in-memory one, for example. And now the test will look like you will have the range once again. Now you define your fake and on the fake you can give a name like in-memory user repository, for example. You provide it to the constructor. Let's create a, a user to call the method, act on the system under tests. And on the assertion, you can do something like this. You can expose methods on the fake and call them to assert the state of the fake. So on this case, I'm calling a get method on the user repository for the ID that I call the service to add. And if it's there, I will get it and I will check if it's not null. So on the case, I'm assuming that if it's not null, it means that in fact it was added. And how do we implement that fake? Let's create the type, implement the missing members, and you can do something as simple like this. You create a data structure to all those values in memory, and you do the implementation to update that data structure. So doing something really simple, the save will add to the dictionary and return true. And now we need to implement that get method that I told you. So the get will return a nullable user and will receive the ID and we try to get it from the dictionary and return that. This that I showed you is a simple implementation of a fake, but the fake can evolve into a more complex thing. Sometimes you can go really far on the development cycle of a project using the fakes, and at a given moment you have all the information and now you decide to implement the real thing. So if you ever struggled with the mocks, with all the expectations that you need to define, if you don't like the complexity that is imposed to you by those frameworks, I invite you to try out test doubles. And if you do it and you want to be effective, make sure you keep those test doubles focused and small. Make sure you give them meaningful names and don't be afraid of creating multiple of those and reusing them in different tests of your system. So what do you think about this? Let me know in the comments if you ever tried this approach to test doubles, if you are willing to ditch your mocking framework, I would love to hear from you. And before you go, it looks like that the YouTube algorithm really thinks that you should watch this video right here. I will see you soon, and in the meanwhile, keep it simple.